Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel with Premium Beat, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create the UI of Instagram. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects, and this is what we'll be creating. And basically, the goal of this tutorial is to show you how to recreate pretty much any sort of user interface from any other you know, website, you know, social media network, and just kind of get the fundamental principles of how we can go ahead and set this up. So anytime you're gonna recreate a user interface, make sure to head over to that site and analyze what elements they're using, their typefaces, how their layout is you know, situated, and just get a good understanding of how this is you know, laid out. So when you have that understanding, you can come over here to After Effects and start recreating those necessary elements. So let's go ahead and jump right into this tutorial. I already have a composition here called Tut, and we're gonna keep this generally exactly like the UI on the cell phone. We're gonna try our best to keep that very consistent. And what we're gonna do is go up to Layer, New, Solid, and we're gonna call it BG for Background, Make, Comp Size, and click OK. Taking a look at you know Instagram over here, obviously we, we need to bring in our logo, we need to put some text in here, you know, just you know, following numbers and bring in, in some images. So we'll go first with the logo. So what we can do is go to our elements folder and bring in a logo. So we'll bring in the premium beat logo. Okay, so here's our logo. And what I wanna do is create a circle background since that's how Instagram is laid out at the moment. So what we can do is go up to the top here, grab our tools and we'll grab the ellipse tool. And we'll hold down shift on our keyboard to draw out a perfect circle like this. And we'll set the fill color to black. And if your stroke is enabled, click on the word stroke and make sure to disable that. Click okay. And now what we can do is put this layer underneath our logo layer. And what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll center this up as best as we can. All right, looking good. And let's go ahead and select both the layers and go up to layer pre-compose and we can call it logo placeholder. And we'll click okay. And basically now we have our logo in here. So we can kind of come over here and get an idea of where we can position this. So I'll kind of keep it at the top. And then we'll go here and type out our following numbers. So what we'll do is I'll grab the textile tool and on the mobile device, there's two different um, styles of the font. So I'm using the typeface Helvetica and we'll be using a variation of light, regular, and bold. So at first here, we'll, come up, we'll set it to uh, bold and we'll type out a following count. So, or sorry, we'll, we'll type out how many posts we'll have. So we'll type in like, you know, 112 is for our sample. And that's looking good. And maybe we'll come over here and make the typeface a little bit bigger. Awesome. And then we need to put the secondary title right underneath here. So we'll type out the word post. And we'll change the style of this. So we'll go from Helvetica Bold to Helvetica Light. And we'll also change the color of the typeface here. So that's looking good. And we can come here and change the leading uh, to be a little bit closer like this. And that's generally how this would look like on the Instagram mobile UI. And we can, of course, hit S and keyboard for scale and scale this down by a little bit. And of course, try to position this exactly where we want to put it. So right there, it's looking good. And before we go ahead and start duplicating this, let's go ahead and animate it so we can get that out of the way right off the start. So let's go to like, you know, maybe a second here, hit P on your keyboard for position, add a keyframe for position, move that keyframe forward in time, maybe by almost a second, and we'll move this all the way to the top. Awesome. So now we have this, that's looking great. So let's go and duplicate this layer by going up to edit, duplicate, and we come over here, P on our keyboard, select both of the keyframes, and we can just move this over by using the X position here. And what we'll do is we'll change maybe the number here to maybe like 1200, and we'll change the secondary title over here to uh, followers. Awesome, and we still might need to make a few adjustments here. But that's looking good, and then once again, we will duplicate this layer, hit P on your keyboard for position, grab both of the keyframes, and use the X position to move it over by a little bit. And we can come here over here and change this word to uh, following. And maybe we'll change the number as well. Maybe we'll do like something a little bit smaller, like 300. Okay, so just a you know nice little sample there. So if these are looking a little bit too big, what we need to do is kind of scale this down even more and we might need to make a few adjustments. So it's a little bit more trial and error to make sure that the UI is gonna look nice. And you know, you still have to come over here and reposition everything. But for the most part, you know, it's pretty simple and 
You know, it just takes a little bit of time to, you know, really dial in those details. Okay, now it's looking pretty cool. And we come over here and offset the keyframes by a little bit so they're not coming in at the same time. And before we move on, let's go ahead and animate the logo as well. So what we'll do is we'll grab the pan behind tool, which is up here at the tools. And we'll grab the anchor point right here and put this right in the center of our logo. And we'll hit S on keyboard for scale. We'll add a keyframe for scale. Move that keyframe forward in time, maybe by a second. And we'll hit zero on our keyboard to set 0%. And now we have this animation coming in here. And also what I, what I want to do is make the last keyframes that we have up here uh, easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. So select the last keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard to make them easy ease keyframes. So basically it will slow down before it comes to a complete stop. All right, next I want to create the follow button. So let's go and grab the rounded rectangle tool and let's set the fill to a nice light blue color and click OK. And we'll draw out the, you know, kind of follow button like this. And we'll go to the rectangle one, go into the rectangle path one and decrease the roundness to maybe about 10 or so, somewhere around that count. And we'll keep it at 10, that looks good. And also we'll go ahead and change the size here, break the link and make it just a little bit thicker. And then let's grab our textile tool again and we'll type out the word uh, follow. And set it to white and we'll make this a little bit smaller. And then we'll go up to window align and we'll go ahead and center this up with the vertical and horizontal tab. And that should look good. So now we have the, you know, the follow button and we come over here, select both these layers and pre-compose them and call it the follow button. And then what we'll do is we'll hit P on our keyboard for position and we'll have it come in around like two seconds. We'll add a keyframe for position with that keyframe forward in time and we'll have it come in from the right side of our comp. Make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And now we have that. So now we have like the top part of our interface here. So I want to go ahead and add like a description to this. So let's go ahead and add a new title, grab the textile tool and we'll type in the name of our Instagram. So premium beat and we'll set this color to black and we'll set this Helvetica to bold. Perfect. And we'll come here, we'll put it right here. Looking good. And then we'll type out our description. And this time, instead of just clicking here and typing out our text, I'm going to click and drag a box like this. And I'm going to paste our text in there. And of course, we want to make this smaller and a little bit lighter for weight. And we'll go here and position this right underneath our title. So now we have our description in here and we're looking good. And then to top this off, I want to go ahead and add a straight line. And we'll basically, I'll grab the pen tool and we'll click from one edge here to the other edge of our UI and we'll just hold down shift to make sure we draw out a perfect line like this. Click the word fill at the top, turn it off, turn it, set it to none, click OK, click the word stroke and set that to solid color. And I want to use a light gray color, click OK on that. And I'm going to set the pixel count to one. And now we have this very thin line in here and we'll call this one line and we'll move it up, position it in a nice spot, which I'm happy with it right there. And now we'll continue to animate some of these elements in here. So we'll click the word premium beat and we'll do an animation presets. So go to up to effects and presets. If you don't see that window, go up to window effects and presets and click on the tab animation presets. Click on the word text, open up the animate in folder. And now we can add some animation presets in here. And basically what I want to do is maybe straight in by character. So we'll drag, we'll drag this right on top of our text. We'll hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes and we'll bring this keyframe way in the last one here to maybe about a second. So we'll have like this, maybe like we'll do a half a second or so. We'll make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe. And then we'll, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit U twice on our keyboard. So hit U, U. And basically that's gonna bring up all the affected parameters. And there's this one tab called position, right? And it's not transform position, but it's a solo trans, you know, position property underneath animator one. What we wanna do is Go to the first keyframe here, and we want to position this just outside of our composition. So basically, it's going to come from left to right like that. And that should be interesting enough. And then for our description here, what we're going to do, so what we're going to do is use the type writer preset, bring that on top of our text, hit you and your keyboard to bring up the keyframes, bring it in a little bit closer, and we'll have these, we'll move these over just by a little bit. Make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard. So now we have this very 
basic animation in here looking good and then for the line we'll just do an opacity so hit t on your keyboard for opacity add a keyframe for opacity move it forward in time and set the opacity down to zero percent and you know pretty simple so boom we have all of our text in here and we might need to make a few adjustments to the keyframes here so we might want to move you know the last part of this animation over like the the text and the line so everything's kind of happening right after each other and that's looking good so now we're at the part we, where we want to start bringing in images and really populating our Instagram page. So what we can do, instead of just bringing in images right off the start, I don't suggest doing that. What I suggest doing is going ahead and going to composition, clicking on new composition, and set the width and height to you know 540. And basically what this is gonna allow you to do is basically create placeholders for your images so you're not so you don't have to worry about cropping anything and you just bring it into After Effects and it's ready to go. So we call this one uh, image tut one and go ahead and click okay and essentially what we're going to do here is we can bring in our first image and of course we'll have to scale this down and we keep it in that square you know format that instagram likes to keep you know and of course we can move it over if we have to and we're looking good we'll go back over to our main composition and we'll grab that image placeholder and we'll bring it right into our composition and we might need to hit s on keyboard for scale and scale this down a little by a little bit and making sure that everything's going to look good. So we'll come here and position this. And then we'll, what we need to do is duplicate this layer, move it over by a little bit, and maybe just like a, keep a thin, you know, white line there. Duplicate it again and find that nice area. And actually that worked out perfectly. Like this is actually perfectly aligned. So now we have these placeholders in here, but the thing is we have to duplicate them even more because this is all the same placeholder and obviously the same image. So what we want to do is hit S on keyboard for scale and add a keyframe for each of these. Move these keyframes back in time by like a second and set the scale down to 0%. So basically we'll just have like this and we'll offset these a little bit later. But let's go ahead and start you know, bringing in new images. So what we need to do is go to image tut one in the project window over here and duplicate it. And we we'll can duplicate it once more. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to grab image tut one here in the timeline and we're gonna grab image tut two in the project window here and we're gonna hold down alt on our keyboard and click and drag and bring this on top of here so basically what's happening is we're able to replace the composition with the new composition in the project window without losing any of its properties so we can go into image tut two here and we can bring in another image and I can scale this down and find a nice place there and then go back over to our main copy and you see the it keeps the same properties and we have the new image in here. Basically with our right image over here, we can grab image tut three, hold down alt on our keyboard and drop, drag and drop it on top of image tut one, double click image tut three, bring in, in our third image, you know, scale that down and maybe delete the first image because we don't need it. And now we have all three of our new images in here and that's looking good. And then we'll, from here, what we can do is duplicate these three and hit P on our keyboard for position, move these down. And basically from here, we're going to go ahead and drop in new images every time. So come over to the project window, duplicate these three, and replace them. Okay, so I went ahead and added a total of nine images in here. And what we need to do now is offset the scale animation in this, and then we're ready to move on to the last step. So what we can do is select all of our comp layers here, our image comp layers, hit S on keyboard for scale, and... I'll just go ahead and make this window a little bit bigger so we can kind of see what we're doing with the keyframes. And we'll just select all the top keyframes minus the uh, you know first comp down here and we'll offset the keyframes by a little bit. And we'll continue to grab the remaining keyframes. And then when we finish the first row, let's go ahead and create even a larger gap here. Kind of like so. And we'll continue to offset these just by like maybe five frames every time. And then for the last row, we'll continue to offset this by even more. And we'll move forward from here. And then of course, to make the last keyframes all easy, ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And now we are looking good. So basically now we have finished up our, you know, first animation set here. So what we'll do is go here and we'll grab all of our layers except for the background, turn on motion blur here and pre-compose them. And we'll call this one UI tut and we'll click okay. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to hit P on our keyboard for position 
Go ahead, make sure to begin the timeline, add a keyframe here, and we'll go ahead and move this down by a little bit. So basically we'll have the center of everything in here. And as this starts to reveal on, we'll have a full animation. So go to like nine seconds and we'll finish up our scaling animation here. And the problem with this is that the images down here are being cut off and we don't want that obviously, right? So what we need to do is we need to go back into our UI tut and go up to composition and click on composition settings. And we need to increase the height and click OK. And then we'll go back into our, you know, cut over here. And basically everything is looking good. You know, our images down here are fixed. So that's great. The only issue is, is that this text is above our composition and we don't want that. So what, what we're going to do is grab our tut here, grab our main comp, grab the rectangle tool and want to draw a very thin mask like this and we'll set it to subtract. So basically the text at the top will come in from an invisible line and everything's going to look really great. So, so we're practically done. Make sure to turn on motion blur over here and turn it on at the top. And after a quick render, this is what we should have something very similar to this. So hopefully from this tutorial, you're able to recreate any user interface from a website or social media that you want to recreate. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. For more tutorials, please be sure to check out our blog at premiumbeat.com. And if you're in the need for royalty-free music, we have a huge library full of great music for your projects. And once again, thank you for watching this video. And this has been Joshua Noel from premiumbeat.com.